Very happy and grateful to be amidst all of you all here today in this most glorious temple of Radha Govindji and um, celebrating with you all the most auspicious month of Kartik. So today we are going to be speaking on one of Krishna's most celebrated pastimes of Damodar Leela and uh, many of you all may have heard the Damodar Leela in many times in your life and we'll be familiar with the story of the Madhur Leela. But today we're going to be discussing some very beautiful lessons and understandings from this pastime that will help you absorb and meditate on this particular pastime in a much deeper and in a much more profound way. The month of Karthik is considered the most auspicious month for many reasons. And one of the reasons is that this month of Karthik is Radharani's month. Krishna is known as Madan Mohan and Radharani is known as Madan Mohan Mohini. She is the one who mesmerizes Krishna completely. And Krishna is so mesmerized by Radha that whatever belongs to her and whatever is connected with her he gives it a much greater priority than anything that is connected with him. The month of Margashirsh, which is the next month after Karthik, is Krishna's month. But how many of us celebrate Margashirsh so much? The Shri Vishnu has celebrated Margashirsh month a lot. But um, for the Gaudi Vaishnavas, Karthik is more important than Margashirsh because the connection with Radha is a very profound connection that helps us connect with Krishna uh, much deeper. Therefore, this month of Karthik is considered very auspicious. So today, we're going to discuss this very beautiful story of Krishna's pa uh, uh, pastime of the Amadur Leela, which is the only pastime which is celebrated for one month. All other pastimes of the Lord are celebrated for one day, few days at max. But here is a story, here is one pastime that is celebrated for an entire month. Imagine how important it is. So today we are going to discuss why it is so important and why this month is celebrated so much. This particular story happens on the Diwali morning. Um, when Krishna was in Vrindavan, one particular Diwali, Mother Rishoda got up very early in the morning to cook 
some sweets for Krishna. Diwali is an occasion where people distribute sweets and eat sweets. Of course, in those days, people would make sweets. Today we buy sweets, isn't it? So the reason why Mother Yashoda would make sweets was because she wanted to put an effort to please Krishna, to make something with her own hands for Krishna. Of course, today is, a, is an age of outsourcing. We outsource everything, you know. I don't know how much it happens in, uh, in US, but in India, nowadays everything gets outsourced, including vegetable cutting. You get cut vegetables, you know. You don't even have to cut them. I'm sure you get them here. Everything we learn from America, America only, mostly, you know. But there are some things we can't outsource. You can't outsource your devotion. Can you, can you get somebody else to chant for you? And I hire someone and chant 16 rounds for me, you know. That doesn't work. Devotion to the Lord has to be done on your own. Mother Ashoda had hundreds of maid servants, but yet she chose to make sweets on her own. And that too, she made sweets from a very special type of milk. And I'm just going to give you a little description of the effort that she put in to get that milk. Mother Ashoda and Nanda Maharaj, they have a huge goshala where they have 900,000 cows. Imagine a you know, goshala with 900,000 cows. I was last year in Vrindavan in Barsana and in Barsana, Ramesh Baba, on great exalted sage, he has a goshala today which has 80,000 cows. I personally saw it. And there was an entire mountain filled with cows. So many cows were there. I couldn't believe when I saw that. And imagine Nanda Maharaj's Goshala, 900,000 cows. So of, of these 900,000 cows, 8 cows were the most important cows. They gave the best quality milk. 8 of them. <clears throat> Mother Ashoda would feed 7 of these 8 cows a special type of grass which was known as Padma Gandha grass. Padma means lotus. Gandha means fragrance. This grass had the fragrance of lotuses. So when the cows ate this grass which had the fragrance of lotuses the milk that came out from these seven cows had the fragrance of lotuses. Imagine the quality of that milk. What Mother Ishida would do was, she would take the milk from these seven cows and feed it to the eighth cow. And the milk from that eighth cow, she would make sweets for Krishna. So you can imagine the quality of the milk of that eighth cow, you know. Why am I telling you this? Just to tell you one small thing. The sign of love is in details. If you really love someone, you will actually go into great detail to show that love by your effort. See, everything that we do in spiritual life can be done in many ways. It can be done in a very superficial way and can be done in a very deep way. Chanting can be done in a very superficial way. Along with chanting, you're watching a mobile phone, you're watching reels and chanting. Very superficial chanting. And chanting can be done in a very deep way, in a very meditative spirit. Cooking for the Lord can be done in a very superficial way or can be done in a very deep way. Every single activity can be enhanced simply by going into details. The more details you go in, the more deeper the activity becomes and the more deeper the meditation becomes. So look at Mother Ashoda, how much depth, how much focus, how much attention how many details she is going into to please Krishna. So that particular morning, Diwali morning, she got up very early, 4 o'clock in the morning and she wanted to cook for Krishna. She thought, before Krishna wakes up, let me, let me cook all the sweets. With that intention, she got up early in the morning and began cooking. So while Mother Ashoda was cooking, she had a habit. She would be singing songs which she had composed about Lord Krishna's activities. 
So what she would do was every evening, Krishna would come back from the grazing, and all the friends of Krishna they would all come back, and they would tell Mother Ishoda different activities that Krishna did in the, in the forest. And when Mother Ishoda would hear these different activities that Krishna did in the forest, that night she would compose a poem, a poetry of those activities of the day. And by next morning, the poem would be so beautifully composed that while cooking in the morning, she would sing this poem of the activities of Krishna the previous day. All the gopis that were around her, they would listen to her humming and singing the poem, and they would learn that poem from Mother Ishoda. And they would go back homes, and they would teach their husbands, they would teach their children, they would teach everyone in their home that poem. And by the next evening. The entire Vrindavan was singing that poem. Imagine what a meditation, isn't it? So Mother Ishoda was singing in this morning, and while she was, so she was singing and cooking simultaneously. She was singing, cooking, and meditating on Krishna. Her body, mind, and words were completely absorbed in Krishna that morning. while she was cooking meditating and absorbing herself in krishna she was in the complete mood of a sanyasi it is explained that particular morning yashoda was wearing the saffron a saffron dress orange color clothes dress a sari the idea of sanyas from a vaishnav perspective is not just connected with the attire nor is it connected with the order of life it is connected with the state of mind it is connected with the absorption which which you have anyone whose body mind and words are completely absorbed in krishna as a sanyasi there are two types of sanyas there is a karma sanyasi and there is a nitya sanyasi karma sanyasis are from an external point of view from a social point of view they are taken the sanyas order but the spiritual consciousness or the or krishna consciousness encourages us to become a nitya sanyasi nitya sanyasi means while you are doing your work while you are raising your families while you are handling responsibilities in life you can still be a sanyasi and that's what mother ishoda was so as she was doing different chores in the kitchen at some point she began to sit down and churn butter So while Mother Ishoda was churning butter, many things were happening. There was that, you know, um, the churning rod, which was inserted in a pot, which was filled with yogurt, and she was moving it around with ropes. The churning was creating a certain type of sound. The rod touching the base of the pot was creating a certain type of sound. the earrings that mother ishoda was wearing they were swinging to and fro they were creating a certain type of sound the bangles that mother ishoda was wearing they were clinging on each other and they were creating a certain type of sound and mother ishoda was singing the poem that she had composed all of it was in perfect synchrony in fact all the gopis the the work that they were doing in the house even they were creating different types of sounds and everything was in rhythm Narad Muni once asked Lord Narayan, "My dear Lord, all of us, every human being in this world, has a permanent address. If someone wants to write a letter to you, what is your permanent address? Can you please tell me?" And Lord Narayan gives a very interesting answer. He says, "Yatra gayanti mad bhakta tatra tishtami narada." He says. wherever my devotees sing my holy names that's where i am that's my permanent address so right now mother ishoda was singing the holy glories of lord krishna and krishna was inside the bedroom sleeping and when krishna was sleeping fast asleep in vrindavan krishna doesn't wake up early he wakes up at his own time so krishna was fast asleep on this huge bed and suddenly he was shaken awake by what by the loving song of mother yashoda he couldn't sleep because when yashoda is singing so beautifully how can he remain asleep 
he was dragged so he literally had to crawl out of his bed and he couldn't walk properly so he was so sleepy he kind of lost his balance he was crawling on the floor and moving at great pace towards mother yashoda he was feeling sleepy but at the same time he was being attracted to mother yashoda singing and that's how krishna is when someone sings very beautifully when someone chants his holy names very beautifully he gets irresistibly attracted to that source so krishna came in uh, and he saw mother yashoda was in a trance her eyes were closed she was churning and she was completely absorbed in krishna and krishna he crawled up to the wooden gra- the um the churning uh, a- area he caught hold of that pot and he stood up and he saw that his mother was completely absorbed her eyes were closed and now he wanted to get her attention and she has dragged him out of sleep and she is now closing her eyes and uh, meditating so krishna said how is this and he caught hold of the uh, hold of the churning rod so the moment he caught hold of the churning rod obviously the churning rod stopped the churning stopped and mother yashoda's eyes opened up and she saw her darling son standing there with a smile on his face mother yashoda immediately understood what krishna is trying to say krishna was hungry for the milk of his mother for the love of his mother mother yashoda picked up krishna put him on his lap started feeding him milk and continued churning why did krishna stop the churning krishna was thinking why is she churning it is explained the vedas all the vedas all the scriptures are compared to an ocean of milk in the in the olden days in the shrimad bhagavatam we find there is a story of samudra manthan the churning of the milk ocean so when the churning of the milk ocean happened finally nectar came out right so imagine if all the vedas are put together and churned what will come out krishna says in the gita vedesh sarvair aham eva vedyo if you churn all the vedas i will come out krishna says i am the result of all churning of the vedas and krishna is thinking why is mother yashoda churning this pot of butter i am already here the result of all churning of nectar is already here why is she wasting time churning this uh, in a pot of yogurt so thinking like that he stopped the churning so mother yashoda put him on his lap on her lap she was feeding him milk and she continued churning so krishna was drinking her milk with her with his eyes closed and he was so absorbed so absorbed so happy with the love of his mother at that time there was a pot of milk kept on the stove which was uh, boiling so mother yashoda kept it on a low flame and it was boiling so mother yashoda obviously her attention was all over the kitchen i mean if somebody has to cook in the kitchen you can't be focus on only one thing you have to be a multitasker right so <coughs> while krishna was drinking the milk of mother yashoda the milk on that stove began to think in vrindavan everything is animate in today's world unfortunately we make people into things right it's called the use and throw culture we use people and uh, so we essentially love things and use people people love iphone and use people isn't it ideally we're supposed to love people and use things but we end up doing the opposite in vrindavan things are also people people are people and things are also people in a sense in vrindavan everything is animate everything has life everything has consciousness so the milk on that stove also was conscious so the milk was thinking what is the use of me living krishna is drinking mother yashoda's milk his need for love is unlimited 
मदर यशोदास मिल्क के सामने लिमिटेड ही विल कीप ड्रिंकिंग हर मिल्क शी विल कीप गिविंग हर मिल्क वॉट वॉट मी सो आई एम यूजलेस आई डोंट इफ कृष्णा इज नॉट गोट ड्रिंक मी वॉट इज द पॉइंट इन माई एग्जिस्टेंस so this milk thinking like that decided to commit suicide don't want to boil over and jump into the fire it was too disturbed and as this milk was boiling over and trying to jump into the fire mother yashoda immediately heard the sound of the milk boiling over she instantly dropped krishna put krishna on the floor and ran to save that milk because she knew that milk is very important i need to use that milk to make more sweets for krishna and krishna was just yanked away from mother yashoda for a moment drop like that and yashoda ran to take care of the milk and for a moment krishna felt lost krishna is a very selfish lover he needs your 100% attention if you don't give him 100% attention he will get angry he gets very disturbed and here was yashoda who was actually giving him 100% attention for some time and then she dropped him like a hot potato and ran to get that pot of milk and krishna was thinking how stupid is that krishna was thinking i gave up the ocean of milk to come over here and be with mother yashoda i gave up the vaikuntha planets the ocean of milk to come here and be with mother yashoda and yashoda is worried about 1 liter of milk here krishna is thinking this is not fair how can she do this to me and he was very upset with mother yashoda see what is the meaning of keeping krishna on the floor what is the meaning of you know leaving krishna on the floor and attending to something else symbolically it means that many of us we sometimes keep krishna aside and prioritize something else in our lives the moment we keep krishna aside and prioritize something else in our life krishna gets very disturbed krishna doesn't like to be left like that in many times we are holding the bead bag the mala and chanting the holy names of krishna and sometimes something more attractive comes we just drop krishna like that and run to attend to something else isn't it and krishna gets very disturbed so krishna gets very disturbed when you are attention is divided he wants undivided attention from us so krishna he is so angry at his mother he decides to teach his mother a lesson so he looks around and in his anger is grinding his teeth so angry so so angry and he wants to do something really naughty to teach his mother that this won't do so he found a little piece of stone somewhere he got that piece of stone and he hit the pot from below krishna is very clever even at that age because he knew if i hit the pot from top it will create a sound but if i hit the pot from below because it's already filled with so much liquid it won't create so much sound but the it will the needful will happen you know he hit the pot right from below and the pot broke and all that yogurt and butter started flowing out you know and it formed a little puddle and the moment that little puddle got formed krishna started you know thinking that i need to now do something even more naughty he was not happy with just this little naughtiness he wanted to do something even more naughty because he was too angry and to do something more naughty he had to cross that puddle because he had to go to the store room So now the puddle was rapidly increasing in size and Krishna was a tiny boy he had to jump over the puddle to go to the store room and Krishna calculated his jump and he he knew he calculated it so well he knew that he was if he does it exactly the way he planned it he will jump across the puddle but unfortunately when he jumped he landed in the, inside the puddle of butter you know both his feet landed inside and krishna was thinking oh how did i mistime it you know the same krishna appeared as vamana dev with one foot he covered the whole universe and the same krishna now 
he is not even able to jump across a small puddle he runs and as he runs to the store room his little buttery footprints form on the floor and his little footprints of krishna are all over the floor and he runs to the store room first and he takes out all the pots of butter milk yogurt everything that is kept there and he begins to splash it on the walls imagine such costly such rare and such good quality butter and milk and yogurt everything being splashed on the walls of the store room and finally he takes one pot of butter and runs out he runs to the courtyard on nanda bhavan in the meanwhile mother yashoda has attended to the milk and she has come back and she comes to see that this whole mess created over there and she immediately understands that krishna has done it and now mother yashoda takes on the form the role of a detective she is following the footprints of krishna trying to find where this butter thief is where this culprit is she follows the footprints of krishna and she reaches the courtyard and in the courtyard mother yashoda sees a scene that is so so bewildering she sees krishna is seated on a wooden grinding mortar with a pot of butter in his hand and all around him are a group of monkeys and krishna is feeding the butter to the monkeys the interesting thing is that dachar has explained why is krishna feeding butter to the monkeys many reasons one of the reasons is that when krishna was lord ram in ramayan and these monkeys assisted him in his past times that time krishna didn't have much to give them so he thought now as nanda um, nanda nandan he was a king of the king of vrindavan as son of the king of vrindavan now he has lot of butter he can feed these monkeys so he is reciprocating to the monkeys for what they did for him but a more important reason is that krishna was thinking so krishna before mother yashoda came he fed the monkeys a lot of butter so all the monkeys were packed they were full with butter and when mother yashoda reached the monkeys refused to eat the butter so krishna wanted to tell his mother your butter is so useless that even the monkeys are not ready to eat it so he kind of just wanted to make fun of her and so mother yashoda when she saw this she was so angry at krishna she picked up a stick and came running to uh, to catch krishna the stick that she picked up was nanda maharaj's stick it was not an ordinary stick it was a stick that was bejeweled with so many diamonds and such precious stones and when krishna saw mother yashoda coming with a stick he jumped off the wooden grinding motor and began to run and mother yashoda began to chase krishna at full pace and as mother yashoda began to chase krishna at great pace krishna kept turning behind and running mother yashoda she was elderly and krishna was a small boy he was energetic i mean if you've seen some mothers who are a little elderly when they have kids when they are you know after 35 you know it's very difficult to catch up with small children's energy isn't it it's not easy to catch up with the energy that a small child has it's intense mother yashoda was chasing krishna and krishna was running at full pace it is explained that great yogis in the himalayas they are all trying to chase krishna with the speed of the mind in spite of chasing krishna the speed of the mind for hundreds of years the yogis are still not able to catch up with him and here is a simple lady from vrindavan not very educated not very scholarly not very austere but she is daring to attempt something that even the great yogis in the himalayas are not able to uh, succeed in and the interesting thing is that she manages to catch krishna also so when yashoda is running behind krishna and is about to catch krishna yashoda on her hair she has a lot of flowers the flowers on the hair of mother yashoda they are having a discussion in vrindavan everything is animated as i said the flowers on the hair of mother yashoda they take two two parties 
some of the flowers take the side of krishna and some of the flowers take the side of mother yashoda the flowers on the side of krishna are telling very bad mother yashoda is doing how can she chase a small boy like this and scare him so much so the flowers on the side of krishna are telling we don't want to do anything with her we are jumping off they jump off from her hair you know and they fall away the flowers on the side of mother yashoda they are telling that we want to assist mother yashoda so that she reaches krishna fast and catches him and they decide that if we remain on the hair of mother yashoda you know her hair her the flowers will be heavy on her hair and it might slow her down it might add weight so they decide to jump off the hair so that they assist mother yashoda so eventually all the flowers fall off and then mother yashoda manages to catch krishna and when mother yashoda catches krishna she has a stick in her hand and in the other hand she has caught krishna and krishna is trembling in fear satyavrat muni in this particular story part of the story he uses this word atanka so the word atanka is a is the most superlative degree of fear one can experience so krishna was not just experiencing fear he was experiencing atanka and he was trembling seeing that stick his eyes were like constantly looking at that stick and he was shivering it is explained that krishna is yad bibeti swayam bhayat fear personified fears krishna so imagine if fear personified is fearing krishna why does krishna have to fear that stick but krishna in the mood of vrindavan as a child of mother yashoda he forgets that he is god he forgets that fear personified fears him and he only remembers that stick is very dangerous so he is scared and in his fear he is trembling and with his with his one hand he starts wiping his tears from his eyes his his eyes are filling up with tears he's just rubbing his eyes with one hand and the mascara the black mascara on krishna's eyes they get spread all over his eyes and when the tears flow down from krishna's eyes from this particular eye which he is rubbing the black mascara mixes with the tears of krishna and a black stream of tears flows down from krishna's cheeks and on the other side there is a transparent flow of uh, tears so both his eyes you know there is a stream of tears falling the acharyas explain these two streams are like the two streams of tears flowing down from krishna's eyes one stream represents the transparent ganga and the other other stream represents the dark yamuna so it's like ganga and yamuna flowing from his eyes and it explained the ganga and yamuna flowing from his eyes goes all over his body like this flows all over they all they are flowing separately and at the navel of krishna they mix together and at the navel of krishna is a hidden saraswati river so in the navel of krishna they all the two two streams of tears they join together they form a puddle and that's triveni sangam ganga yamuna and saraswati mixed together you know and when mother yashoda sees the trembling of krishna and the fear of krishna she drops the stick and the moment she drops the stick krishna stops you know trembling she is not so so afraid but mother yashoda thinks that this boy has become too naughty very very naughty has become i need to discipline him and mother yashoda is thinking i have so much work to do but if i let this boy be he is going to do so much of mess because he is angry he is scared and he is naughty all together so she decides the only way to stop him from doing further naughtiness and causing harm to himself is if i tie him up she decides to tie up krishna with the culprit with one more co-conspirator that is a wooden grinding motor on which he was sitting and distributing butter to the monkeys he she said i'll tie him up to that motor only so she pulls krishna puts him against that motor 
and she pulls out the hair from her uh, the ribbon from her hair to use that ribbon to tie up krishna mother ashoda knows the dimensions of her baby she knows that if i just use this ribbon i will be able to manage to tie up my baby but when she tries to actually tie up krishna to the wooden grinding motor the the rope falls short by two fingers she thinks maybe i just need another rope she pulls out the ribbon from another hair hair uh, you know other plate and she uses that ties it up and tries to tie the knot again it is exactly two fingers too short she tells the gopi assistants get me more ropes they run around get a few ropes from the kitchen she knots them all together and she ties them up exactly two fingers too short she's thinking what's happening i'm adding so many ropes so she says tell the gopis go to the goshala and get more ropes the gopis go to the goshala and get so many more ropes no matter how many ropes mother ishoda is joining to the original rope it still falls two fingers too short mother ishoda she tells the gopis get all the ropes in the goshala 900000 cows they get all the ropes they start tying it together it still falls two fingers too short Mother Ishoda tells the gopis, "Go home, get ropes from your house." The gopis go home and get so many ropes from every single house in Vrindavan. Ropes are coming, and it very soon becomes a rope festival. Everyone in Vrindavan is getting ropes to Nanda Bhavan, and Mother Ishoda is tying and tying and tying and tying, and every time she tries to tie the knot, it's exactly two fingers too short. Now there is no rope left only in Vrindavan. all the ropes are used and still krishna is not been able to uh, be tied up the gopis tell mother ashoda don't you think you should just give up what is this why are you putting so much effort so the gopis tell her they tell her the truth they tell her maybe krishna is narayan and krishna doesn't want to be tied up why are we trying to tie up god mother ashoda tells the gopis I don't care if my son is God. He is still my son. I am going to tie him up. You know, you are like so clear about it. And here, after so much effort of trying, she is just not able to bind. It is explained. Mother Ashoda began this tying effort at early in the morning, and now it's late in the evening. Twelve hours she has been trying to tie up Krishna. after 12 hours of trying she is just not able to tie up finally mother ashoda realizes that i don't think i can manage to tie up krishna exactly at that time radharani comes with her hair band and she offers her hair band to mother ashoda and the moment mother ashoda uses that hair band of radharani exactly at that point in time something very sweet happens a drop of sweat from the from the forehead of mother ashoda falls on krishna's body and the drop of sweat begins to talk to krishna and the drop of sweat tells krishna oh my dear boy why are you troubling your mother so much just let it be please be merciful on your mother look at how much effort she is putting to try to tie you up just be kind on her so when this drop of sweat speaks to krishna and reminds him of his kindness suddenly krishna decides i'll allow myself to be tied up and exactly at that point in time mother yashoda decides i don't think i can tie him up and yashoda decides i am going to leave it i am going to stop this effort forget it you know so her mind she has decided to stop tying krishna and stop this effort but her body her hands have been tying krishna for all day she has been trying right somehow the hand continues tying though her mentally she has given up physically she continues and that last knot that she puts is a knot that ties up krishna and she shocked just when she is giving up you know krishna agrees to be bound mother ashoda becomes so happy that she finally managed to tie up krishna it is explained that these two fingers represent our effort and krishna's grace in spiritual life we need to put in efforts and when we put in enough efforts some day krishna's grace will come the problem with most of us is that just when krishna's grace is about to come we stop putting efforts 
because you know to get the grace of the lord it takes a lot of effort so a lot of people they keep putting effort for years and years and years and at some point they they feel i don't think this process works for me they don't understand how close they were to get grace they don't understand how close they were to get the mercy of the lord when they just decided to give up so here this whole story is a story of our lives there are three ways to look at life the first way is known as karmavad what is the meaning of karmavad karmavad means work is worship i am the maker of my own destiny there are many people in this world who believe in the philosophy of karmavad just like a monkey if you've seen monkeys kids monkey babies the monkey babies hold on to their mothers you know they're like so tightly clinging on to their mothers the mother doesn't do anything the mother jumps from one tree to another and it is up to the baby if the baby manages to cling on it will survive if the baby doesn't manage to cling on it will fall that's how monkey babies are you know so the effort has to be put by the baby not by the mother this is karmavad karmavad means work is worship i will make my own destiny so there are many people who believe in in the philosophy of karmavad but the reality is karmavad is an incomplete philosophy there are so many people who work hard it's not that all of them become successful in their lives isn't it if only hard work would lead you to success all those people who work so hard would all be successful but that doesn't happen always isn't it the other philosophy of life is known as daivavad what is daivavad daivavad means i depend on on god completely i won't do anything there are many people who believe strongly in the philosophy of daivavad they just believe i will pray and god will take care of all my problems i don't have to do anything just like a cat carries its kitten in its mouth what does the kitten do have you observed what the kitten does nothing it's relaxing the cat only the mother has to do put all the effort isn't it so in the monkey baby the monkey baby has to put the effort and a kitten the kitten has to do nothing the mother does all the effort so there are some people who believe in the kitten philosophy in daivavad which means god will take care of me i don't have to do anything i only pray daivavad makes you lazy karmavad makes you crazy and daivavad makes you lazy why does karmavad make you crazy simply because you put so much effort and not necessarily you get success you get frustrated people get depressed but i put so much effort it's not working out and then daivavad is the other extreme it makes you totally lazy there was a guy who was whose village was flooding up with water and when the village was flooding up someone came in a bullock cart to his house and they told him sir why didn't you come with us we'll take you to safety this man said no no don't worry i'm praying to god god will take care of me the water was rising this fellow went to the first floor of his of his building and a man came in a boat and came to this man and told him you come with me sir i'll take you to safety this man said no no don't worry i'll pray to god god will take care of me the water rose further he reached the terrace of his building one guy came with a helicopter and told him come with me i'll take you to safety this fellow said no no don't worry god is there he'll take care of me eventually this fellow died and he reached god and he asked god what is this i had so much faith in you how come you never saved me god said i came three times to you to save you but you stupid fellow you didn't recognize me all the three times so when someone is in in this mood of daivavad they don't want to put the effort they just put the whole thing on god in our temple in mumbai in chapati every year at a particular time lot of students come when we see all these kids come we understand either it is result time or exam time just before exam you know they kind of remember god too much basically yeah. they don't want to put the effort but they want to depend on god so both these philosophies are incomplete philosophies in and of themselves bhakti is a combination of two bhakti means i put my effort but also depend on grace of god the the analogy for that is the animal i don't know if this is an animal for that i have to still figure out <laughs> the the understanding is just like if suppose somebody is drowning in a in a well and um someone drops a rope into the well 
So now, first of all, if the rope doesn't come in, there's no question that he'll get saved. But if the rope comes in and he doesn't catch hold of it, there's no question the person on top can't save him, isn't it? So he has to put his effort, effort also and grace also has to come. The combination of the two is what makes life work. Just like in a bank, if you have a bank locker, there are two keys. One key is with you and one key is with the bank manager. You put your key, the bank manager puts his key and both the keys are open, then the lock opens. Then the door opens, isn't it? You put your key, but the bank manager doesn't put his key, the door won't open. The bank manager puts his key, but you don't put your key, the door won't open. When both put their key exactly simultaneously, the door opens. That's the path of bhakti. The two fingers too short in this Damodar Leela is exactly indicating that. The first finger represents our effort. And the second finger represents Krishna's grace. When Krishna sees us sincerely putting in effort, then and only then Krishna will decide to bring in his grace. And the combination of the two opens the lock of bhakti and we get transformed, we achieve perfection of our lives. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Before I end, I just wanted to make a quick introduction to some of my books. Um, as I've been introduced, there is a whole series of books I wrote called Ramayana, the Game of Life, which is available out. There's only one set display available out. In case some of you all want to get the whole set, you can just place an order and we'll send the books for you. And there are a few more books, very interesting books that I would highly recommend you all to pick up. Especially this one book called Ancient Wisdom to Elevate the Mind. It's a book that you will love and it's filled with so many stories. I really thank all of you for your patient attention and enthusiastic participation. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Jasomati Nandana Rajavara Nagara Gokula Ranjana Kana Jasomati Nandana Rajavara Nagara Gokula Ranjana Kana Gopi Parana Dhana Madana Manohara Gopi Parana Dhana Madana Manohara Kaliya Damana Bidana Kaliya Damana Bidana Amala Harina Amiya Bilas Amala Harina Aumiya Bilas Bipina Purandara Nabina Nagaravara Bipina Purandara 
নবী নানা গারাবার বংশি বাধান ব্রজ জন পালন আসুর কুল নাচন ব্রজ জন পালন আসুর কুল নাচন নন্দ গোদন রাখো গোদন রাখো দশমতি নন্দন ব্রজ বর নগর গোকুল রঞ্জন যমুনা তট চর গোপি বসন হর যমুনা তট চর গোপি বসন হর রাস রসিক কৃপা মোয়া রাস রসিক কৃপা মোয়া শ্রীরাধা বল্লব বৃন্দাবন নট বর শ্রীরাধা বল্লব বৃন্দাবন নট বর ভক্তি বিনোদ ভক্তি বিনোদ দশমতি নন্দন ব্রজ বর নগর গোকুল রঞ্জন গোপী পরাণ ধান মদন মনোহর গোপী পরাণ ধান মদন মনোহর গোপী পরাণ ধান মদন মনোহর রবীন্দ্রন ধান মদন মনোহর কালিয়া দমন বিধান কালিয়া দমন বিধান অমল হরি নাম অমিয়া বিলাস অমল হরি নাম অমিয়া বিলাস বিপিন পুরন্দর নবীন নগর বর বিপিন পুরন্দর নবীন নগর বর বংশী বধান শো বাসা ব্রজ জন পালন অসুর কুল নাচন ব্রজ জন পালন অসুর কুল নাচন নন্দ ব্রজ জন পালন আসুর কুল নাচন নন্দ গোদন রাখো নন্দ গোদন রাখো যমুনা তট চর গোপি বসন হর যমুনা তট চর গোপি বসন হর রাস রসিক কৃপা মোয়া রাস রসিক কৃপা মোয়া শিরাদা বল্লব বৃন্দাবন নট বর শিরাদা বল্লব বৃন্দাবন নট বর বকতি বিনোদ ভক্তি বিনোদ দশমতি নন্দন ব্রজ বর নগর গোকুল রঞ্জন গোপী পরাণ ধান মদন মনোহর গোপী পরাণ ধান মদন মনোহর কালিয়া দমন বিধান কালিয়া দমন বিধান রাধা কৃষ্ণ রাধা কৃষ্ণ রাধা কৃষ্ণ প্রাণ মোরা 
राधा कृष्ण राधा कृष्ण राधा कृष्ण प्राण मोरा राधा कृष्ण प्राण मो जुगल किश जीवन मरण गति आरो नही मो जीवन मरण गति आरो नही मो राधा कृष्ण राधा कृष्ण राधा कृष्ण प्राण मोरा राधा कृष्ण प्राण म जुगल किश जीवन मरण गति आरो नही मो जीवन मरण गति आरो नही मो कलिंदी रकूले के ली कदम बेर कलिंदी रकूले के ली कदम बेर रतन बेदीर पर बसा दुजन रतन बेधीर पर बसा दुजन राधा कृष्ण राधा कृष्ण राधा कृष्ण प्राण मोरा राधा कृष्ण प्राण मो जुगल किश जीवन मरण गति आरो नही मो जीवन मरण गति आरो नही मो क्षमा गौरी अंगे देव चुआ चंदन गंदा क्षमा गौरी अंगे देव चुआ चंदन गंदा चमर धोला बे 